Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to cover the use of timers and counters within a PLC and we're going to do some examples. So let's get started with what we're going to do today. This is part one of three in the series and in part one we're going to do a quick introduction and we're going to cover some of the basics. We're going to review the numeric systems used in CX Programmer for sending data into a function the number of seconds we want the timer to run or the number of increments we wish to count in the case of the timer and counter function. We're going to introduce the timer and the counter functions and give some of the background. We're going to review the memory areas available within the PLC. In previous tutorials we've seen these areas including the working area um, and now we're going to introduce some new areas of memory. Finally we're going to write some ladder logic, just an example program to illustrate the use of a timer. We're going to illuminate a lamp after we've pressed the button for four seconds. And in the second part, we're going to switch off that lamp after two seconds. So it'll involve using two timers in series. In this particular tutorial, we're looking at the instructions for the counter and for a timer. But this is true of all the different functions that have numeric inputs. If I want to enter a binary number, I need to put a hash in front of the number to signify it's a binary number. Each of these, one, two, three, and four represent zero to F, i.e. zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, and F, which gives me 16 possible leavings. If I'm using a signed decimal value, that means I need to put a plus or a minus in front of it, which gives me a dynamic range of minus 32,768, and plus 32,767. For us, we're going to be used mostly using an unsigned decimal, so we can have a dynamic range of 0 to 65,535. So we need to put this am sign or ampersand in front of it. If you're using binary coded decimal, you only have a dynamic range between 0 and 999. So that means you can have, or you can address, between 0 and 999, i.e. 1,000 different numbers. If you use a decimal, we have the possibility to go to 65,535. The timer and counter are the same function implemented in different ways. The timer counts down from a particular value, say 4 seconds, in this case the time, and the TIMX instruction count down in increments of 100 milliseconds. The high speed timer we'll look at in a later video. We have one second millisecond timer, we have an occlumative timer, a long timer, a multi output timer, all different variants of the same instruction. The counter differs from the timer in that you must give it the instruction to count to the next one as opposed to the timer which is using the clock. We have a reverse timer, a reset timer, all variants of the same instruction. And we also have some block programming instructions here. We have a timer weight and a high speed timer weight and a counter weight, all of which we'll look at in a later video. For this particular project, we're concentrating on the working bits, which are all in the working area. Here, there's also memory areas assigned to the counter flag and the timer flag. We have the possibility to store 495 counters and 495 timers. To determine if it's a timer or a counter, you need to assign it to the correct memory area. And you do that by putting a C in front of it or a T. C for a counter, T for a timer. Just like with the working bits, here we need to put a W in front of it. If I want to address a byte 0 in bit 1, it'd be 0 0.01. For this tutorial, we're going to use the TINX function here because it uses a binary input and we're going to put the ampersand in front of all our numbers. So you can see here the SV or set value is between 0 and 999 for BCD and 0 to 6553 for decimal. A quick overview of the operation of a timer. When the timer input is on, that is you've pressed the button to activate the timer, the timer will count down the set point like this until it gets to zero. When the set point has reached zero, the complete flag will come on here 
and will remain on as long as the timer input is active. Then we'll go back to zero and the timer can run again. If, for instance, you end the timer early, so you press the timer and you don't get to the set point, the complete flag does not turn on and the timer will reset when you press the button again until the complete flag comes on. For a counter, this is slightly different. For a counter, it's each pulse is counted from the set point and decrements the value by one. After it's counted down to zero, the complete flag will come on. Another slight difference here is you must give it a reset input to reset the timer so it can be used again. Unlike the timer here, where it's reset when the timer finishes. So let's start coding in CX Programmer. I've opened up a blank CX Programmer using Ladder. And I'm going to use the magnified tool just so you can see better. I've created four variables here, a green lamp, a blue lamp, and two buttons here, timer button and counter button. And these are all in working bits for me because I'm just simulating it here on my PC. In the lab, these will be real buttons, two real lamps and two real buttons that are on one of the test rigs. But for me, I'm just using working bits 1.0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2 and 3. I'm simulating that using CX Designer. And I've created a little HMI here with two buttons. There's my timer button and there's my counter button. At the moment, the two buttons don't do anything, but we're now going to add the programming to make them do something. And the first thing I need to do is I'm going to add a timer. So let me go to the symbols again. Insert symbol. And I'm going to call it timer demo. One of the biggest mistakes students make is they forget to change the data type from boolean to timer. So if you look down here, I have a counter and I have a timer. So I'm going to select timer and I'm going to give that T and I'm just going to put it in T0. And there you go. I have my little timer and there's a little symbol of a watch there. Also going to create a counter at the same time. I'm just going to call that counter demo. Again, I'm going to select counter from the drop down menu. And I'm going to give that C0 for a counter. Remember from the slides, these are two different memory addresses, one for counters and one for timers. And you can see the data type now is counter and timer respectively. So I'll go back into my section and I'm going to add my first bit of code. So let's create a timer or a demo for a timer. And I'm going to add a new contact. And the contact I'm going to add is going to be HMI timer button. And I'm going to go OK. And now I need to add my timer. So in this case, my timer here, I'm going to add new instruction. And I need to put the instruction in. My instruction is TIMX. And I can select details. And it shows me here that it's a timer and it has two inputs. So my first input is the timer number. So I can put in T0 there. And it tells me down here that was timer demo. That's what I've added as a local variable. Select down one more and I need to set the value. So in this case, I'm going to put in and, and I want my timer to run for four seconds. So you're told here in the text, it's 100 milliseconds per tick. And there's 1000 milliseconds in one second. Therefore, if I put in 40, that'll be four seconds. I also have the option here to select instructional help. If I do that, the instructions for TIM and TIMX come up and it tells me here that a TIMX takes a binary value and a set value. So this is very useful if you're not too sure how to use the function. And remember, this is available for all the functions and does give a full 
implementation of the function there and then the very bottom there's even an example on how you can use it okay so i'm going to select that now and now i've added my first timer and it's going to run for four seconds but i need the timer to do something so what i want the timer to do is i want to turn on the lamp so let me add in another contact here in this case we want to use the timer complete contact so we know the timer ID was T I M E or demo. So I'm going to go OK. So when timer complete, when timer demo is complete, I wanted to do something. I wanted to set the lamp. In this case, I'm going to add an instruction, and the instruction is going to be set space, and I'm going to put my lamp in there. Lamp green. Brilliant. So now my timer will set the lamp. So let's see what happens when I run this code and see can I improve it any further. To run the code, I'm doing this in Simulator. So I do Control Shift W to go online. And you can see now my code is online in the simulator and the rail is hot. And so I brought up my simulator here and I'm gonna press the timer. So I press the timer and you can see it's counting down now my four seconds, but I'm gonna let go and nothing's happened. Down, and nothing's happened. So let me hold it down for the full four seconds. See it counting down, gets to zero. Timer's gone, and the lamps come on. And you can see now the timer has reset because I've released the button. Press it again, and it's counting down. So the lamp remains on here. So we, so we want the lamp to go back off again after, say, two seconds. So when the lamp is on, so we'll use that as our input. Lamp green. We're going to create another timer, a second timer. Instruction. This time, T-I-M-X. And I'm going to put T1. Now, I haven't set this up in the symbols already, so let's see what happens. So T1, it's a different timer and space, and I'm gonna put in two seconds. So in this case, 20, and I'm gonna press okay. Now you can see there that it's put in 0001, but it hasn't put in a name. So on this lamp, when this completes, what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to reset the lamp. So let's do that. Add in a timer. Complete contact, so this was T1. And that's gonna reset my green lamp. Or set. So let's test this and see does it work. So I've gone back online now and I've brought up the simulator. So let's press the button. There we go. Our timer demo is going down. It's gone to zero. My lamp is gone. And it's turning back off after two seconds. Let's try again. Stays on. And my lamp goes off for two, after two seconds. So we've used two timers to get the lamp to come on after four seconds, but only stay illuminated for two seconds. With my code, I still have T001 which is a little bit ugly and doesn't tell me what it's going to do. So let me add a second timer into my symbol table. It's always good practice to insert your symbols rather than just using addresses. Insert symbol. Timer lamp off. Remember, change the data type to timer. And we're going to put that into it. T1 for timer one. So that's added my timer. Let me go back into my code. And you can see now my code is updated and there's timer lamp off. In the next part of this video, we're gonna look at implementing the counter instruction and how we can use the counter instruction to count up to a certain number of button presses and then use the timer with the counter function to do some neat things. See you in the next video.